Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Today we'll be diving into another Bible study with Brother Gio. We'll be diving into John chapter 13, verses 21 through 38. To begin, we're going to do an opening prayer by me, and then we're going to get straight into the word for today. Uh, if you can, bow your heads and close your eyes, reverence for God. Father God, we thank you, we praise you, we worship you, God. We thank you for this day that you have made. I will rejoice and make it down your cast. We just pray we came together today as a part of God. I am to be able to sharpen iron, God. We pray that you'll be able to instill a message to us, God. That way we will be able to discuss your word right now. We pray that key information that needs to be learned, key information that needs to be discovered in the word today, God, you'll be able to um, bring it to our heads and figure it into existence so that way we can discuss it and educate ourselves and the viewer, God. We just pray that we keep on doing this each and every week, God. We pray that I am able to sharpen iron, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen, amen. amen. With last week's verse from 1 through 20, you do uh, with, um, this was getting which, close to... Which version are you doing? NLT. NLT, okay. So we're doing 21 through 38. Copy. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so... When Jesus had thus said, he was troubled in spirit and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting of whom he spake. That's definitely the King James. Let me go back to that. I, um, 23. The disciple Jesus loved was sitting next to Jesus at the table. Uh, Simon Peter mentioned. You, know what, you want to start from twenty one? Are you right? 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 Twenty one. So now Jesus was deeply troubled, and he exclaimed, "I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me." The disciples looked at each other, wondering whom he could mean. The disciple Jesus loved was sitting next to Jesus at the table. Simon Peter mentioned to him to ask, "Who is he talking about?" So that disciple leaned over to Jesus and asked, "Lord, who is it?" Jesus responded, it is the one to whom I give the bread, I dip in the bowl. And when he had dipped it, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. When Judas had eaten the bread, Satan entered into him. Then Jesus told him, hurry and do what you're going to do. None of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant. Since Judas was their treasurer, some thought Jesus was telling him to go and pay for the food or give or to give some money to the poor. So Judas left at once, going out into the night. As soon as Judas left the room, Judas said, the time has come for the Son of Man to enter into his glory, and God will be glorified because of him. And since God receives glory because of the Son, he will give his own glory to the Son, and he will do so at once. Dear children, I will be with you only a little longer, And as I told the Jewish leaders, you will search for me, but you can't come where I'm going. So now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other, just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. Simon Peter asked, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus replied, you can't go with me now, but you will follow me later. But why can't I come now, Lord? He asked. I'm ready to die for you. Jesus answered, die for me? I tell you the truth, Peter. Before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you will deny three times that you even know me. Mm -hmm. This was at the Last Supper where Jesus ate his last meal with his disciple. He told them that one of them will betray him. Uh, I believe it was Peter that he told the one that he gave him, the one that he gave the brother to eat, 
uh, that one will betray me, which was Judas. Uh, uh, everybody at the table was like, who gonna betray me? I mean, betray you. The Bible was looking confused, like, who, who gonna do it? Who gonna do it? And it was Judas all along. And Jesus is just basically um, telling them exactly what's going to happen without telling them what exactly is going to happen. If that makes sense to you. Like, it does. Um... Given, like, like, He's giving you the information, but leaving some stuff out. So it's like the half, the half truth. But he's not lying. Yeah, I I think that um, what you said, what you said is pretty much spot on. Um, two things stuck out for me. Um, Jesus speaking to the devil after he entered into um, first. The devil entering into Simon, mm -hmm. Jesus being aware of it and um, speaking directly to him. Um, and then the other thing that stuck out was the new commandment. I believe it's in the next chapter, or maybe two, two or three chapters after, where Jesus tells us that if you do these two commandments, then you would fulfill everything that was discussed in the Mosaic law, right? All the other commandments. Um, but first off, let's talk about spiritual discernment. Mm -hmm. um, I think that, that that's something that comes with, how do I say it? Uh, something that comes with um, your connection with God, like a, uh, being able to identify false false truths, right? Like people will come up to you and tell you, uh, I don't know, like, like how Jesus was when he was tempted in the wilderness, when he was sent to the wilderness, right? After he got baptized. Um, being able to discern the truth from falsified information. Um, Knowing when, so let's say like a, 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 I don't know, a minister is talking, right? And they, they're just saying stuff and it, it's just not sitting right with you. And you're trying to figure out what is this dude talking about? Like, where's he getting this information from? And that to me is a part of the spiritual discernment that, that the Holy Spirit gives us, right? And he, he enables us to be able to identify with his spirit and be able to identify when there's other false spirits or spirits of the enemy. Um, and as you can see, Jesus is displaying that, that uh, characteristic that comes with the Holy Spirit, being able to identify spirits from the spirit, the Holy Spirit versus the enemy and his demonic spirits. Um, the other aspect I want to speak about concerning the devil entered inside of him, um, we need to be mindful of that ourselves. Sure. If we're not careful, if we're not paying attention to what's happening, um, we could easily become an agent for the enemy to use us for whatever it may be. You know, it may be um, shouting at your family members or friends and saying ugly things to hurt their feelings because of how you're feeling in the temporary moment. Um, I mean, that could very well even be your flesh too, right? Um, yeah. But uh, just just being aware of what's happening, right? And I think that if we intentionally, how do you say it? Uh, if we if we intentionally um, go about seeking God, having His Word implanted in our hearts, constantly thinking and dwelling about it all throughout the day, I think that we too can be victorious in using the Word to combat the devil and his plans, similar to what Jesus did in the uh, in the in the wilderness. Right? He didn't he didn't like do what we may do like if something comes to hit us like to try to harm us or something like that right or we're getting attacked instinctively some of us may some of us may uh 
try to ignore it, try to like move it away ourselves, right? But that's not what Jesus did. Jesus addressed it head on using the word of God, right? Um, and that's why I think it's so important for us to read the word. I don't, I'm not sure how to be an effective Christian or to be a Christian, to say the least, without reading the word. It's like, I, don't, I feel like everything in life comes with a rule book, except parenting. The only thing that doesn't come with guidelines. <laughs> <laughs> but but even in that, I mean, yeah. But not to cut you off, I compare it to driving. You're not gonna know the rules, the regulation, and how to drive properly if you don't um have the driving manual and study it and go over it and right. meditate on it and memorize it. Cause you go, you're gonna crash. You're yeah. gonna crash. And and then if, it's, it's funny you say that because if you like. So, so reading it, understanding it, like you said, memorizing it is one thing, but then the next step is to apply it. Right. Yeah. Right. So you, it's, it's, that's exactly what Jesus did. He, because he had the word inside of him. I mean, granted he is the word. Um, he was able to use it in his time of need. And I think that that is something that's very, very crucial mm -hmm. And our walk, right? We we really need to be mindful of the enemy, right? All he's looking to do is to steal, kill, and destroy, right? He's just looking for a moment to be used. Um, and it's interesting that the devil and his his army, for lack of better terms, they have to consume. A, a, a vessel, an earthly vessel, in order to do something, right? It's like, it's like just based off the example. So, like case in point, um, I don't think we got to it yet, but when Jesus casts out several spirits from this one man, the 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 evil spirits that were inside the one man, they asked Jesus, can can they go somewhere else? They didn't want to just leave, like because they had nowhere else to go to cause mischief. So instead he cast them out and they went into some pigs. And when they went into the pigs, they jumped off the cliff and drowned the pigs. Like so it's just like I still have to say we really gotta be mindful of allowing ourselves to be readily available for the enemy to use us. Right, and that includes putting yourself in certain situations, like being in certain places with certain people, right? Um, and just constantly being just like asking God to give you spiritual discernment to know the difference of what's going on. And I, I agree. Just like with the Bible, how I study it, try to memorize it, meditate it. I'm working on my permit, so I'm going through that driver's menu the same way uh, with my Bible. I'm, I'm doing it with, with this driver's menu to be able to, you know, get this permit um, sooner enough. I'm not going to rush it because you got to drive and you really got to make sure you know everything you need to know so you don't cause no accident. I'm gonna be patient with that. Yeah, I mean, some things, some things you actually have to take what you know and go out there, and then you really don't grasp the concept of it, or you really don't grasp it the way you need to grasp it until you are tested. Right? Even even in James chapter one, it says that um, you will be tested, right? And your test, your, your your faith, your faith will be tested, and it will be increased or your faith will become stronger as you go through these tests. But how, what's the answer to the test? Where can you find them? So if you don't have those answers and you go sit at that exam, it's a good chance you might not make it out. <laughs> you know 
you know, you might not make it out on top. So it's like, um, you know, we, it's, I think it's like impossible to live the Christian life without the word. It's almost like being a human being and living without food. Like we have to feed ourselves physically just as just like we have to feed ourselves spiritually. Have to. I'm totally I'm totally agree because I've I've tried being a Christian and living the Christian life that way I wasn't touching the word. I've tried to we no guilt we all guilty of that bro. We're all guilty of this. It's because a lot of people don't Mm-hmm. A lot of people shy away from thou, they, though, if, right? For us, to, that's one of the reasons, like, yo, I don't understand what was even talking about. Um, other people stray away from it because um, they just don't know where to start. Like, what am I reading? It's a huge book, right? They don't have somebody um, like yourself who's uh, helping breaking down the word and posting videos, right, and encouraging young Christians along the way. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's tough. I mean, we're all guilty of it, but once, once, if you really, really want it, I'm sure there's every church in the world provides one day a week where they're doing Bible study. It's online stuff. If you like people, YouTube and Google everything. So if you really, really want it, it's at your fingertips. Use use the Googling. YouTube it. But I was going to say, uh, with my trying to visit, I can tell you from experience, uh, it's not, it's, it's not going to work. It's not going to work. No, no. It's not going to work. I was so confused. I, I, I don't know. I don't know what I was doing. Like, like, I, you, don't, I was, you don't even know that you're confused and living, starving yourself until you actually start to eat. The word, like you don't really even realize it, and then, you, and then when you start to see yourself in the word when you're reading it, you're like, "Oh snap! I didn't even know that." <laughs> right? It's crazy. I can't tell you how much moments like that I've had. Yeah. Like when you dig deep into the Bible, you think I was like the same way at first. I was like, I don't understand that. I don't understand what verily, verily. I say unto you is I don't know what that is. Yeah. I don't know if thou this no be like I didn't know what it is, but with the different versions of the Bible, it translate it translates it for you. And you're able to better understand uh the Bible through that. Or if that translation don't work for you, you can either go online, search on YouTube, see somebody made a video and then break it down, or you could go to one of your YouTube leaders. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, the other point was the new commandment. Um, he says in verse 34, it says, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. That It says, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples if you have love one to another. That's so huge, bro. So huge. Like, you can't put uh, a a value or a quantity on on love. Like, you can't. It's, It's just pure, true love. I don't even know how the Bible puts it in words. But like it's like Jesus is love. He specifically says to love each other as he has loved us. So the next time your brothers, either one of them, do something to you, I want you to try to just to display the Jesus love that flows through you unto them. That's your challenge. <laughs> All right. And I'll I'll take I'll take on that challenge. Uh, I'm trying to think. I think I'm trying to think of one for you. I don't, I don't have it. Uh, I mean, I'm 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 one for me. Yeah, I, I challenge I'm Sophia, Samara, yeah. Shari, you name it. Like, is it, <laughs> I get challenged every moment. I, I, I challenge. 
I challenge with your family that if anything goes wrong and you start to get a little aggravated or angry, I challenge you show love in that situation. I'm I'm gonna shake them. I'll be honest. <laughs> oh, you know, but I'm working on it. You know, I might, I might, I might, I might have to pick stuff up and put stuff down. I might, I might have to. <laughs> but um, but that's that's honestly, man. That's that's really what it is, man. And I think that churches would be different. I think that homes would be different, right? You won't have uh, mothers going up against daughters. You won't have fathers going abandoning their, their children or even mothers the same. You won't have so many mixed families, right? Where oh, that's we got different fathers and or we got different mothers and you, you won't have things like that. And because of perfect love, if perfect love replaced the hate that, that resides on the inside of man, the world would be a different place, right? Like you, you would, you wouldn't lack because the love I have for you would ensure that you have everything that you need. I mean, I'm not Jesus, but you know, you need, you need a couple dollars and I had it. I got you. You know what I mean? Because I don't have to worry about being lack of lacking because my, my friend, if he sees me a little low, I got you, Gio, right? And it's just, it's just a reciprocating thing, right? The gift that never ends. It just keeps on giving. So um, I I just think that that's really important. And he's telling us, he said, it's a new commandment. So in comparison to the old commandments, right, Um, which were, uh, what do you call it? The the ones he gave to Moses, right? Yeah, the one he gave to Moses. He's saying that this is the new one. So not to say that he's, doing away with the old commandments like oh don't worry about those never mind those he's saying if you if you obey this new one right if you abide by it then you would have fulfilled all of the other commandments he just simplified things yeah so we got to go out into the world today and we got to show the love of God. And it's not something that we can do on our own, I don't believe. I think that as you continue to grow in Christ, the Holy Spirit does the ch- ch- transformation and change that you need to display the love of Christ. So continue to seek God. Continue to, um, you know, sit in his word and prayer and whatnot. And just allow, make yourself available for God to consume your vessel with his Holy Spirit to fill you up and send you out each and every day um, and to go out there and show the world the love that Christ has for you and for everyone else for that matter. Um, randomly, uh, uh, now we'll be getting into the closing prayer by Reddit Rio and oh, I'm going to <laughs> <That's what laughs> Okay. Now we'll be doing the closing prayer by Reddit Gio and right after we'll be doing the outro. Father God, we give you all the glory and honor. We exalt you because you deserve it, because you are worthy, O righteous one. We thank you for providing us with your word, the living word, the only word that we ought to live by and stand on. Father, we thank you for giving us the understanding of what you are doing in this chapter, Father God, what you're saying to us. And I pray that you don't stop what you reveal to us now, but that you continue to give us new revelation. Father, we trust that you would continue to work in us by way of your Holy Spirit, showing us how to love ourselves and even now, Lord God, our fellow brothers and sisters. I pray that as we go out today, Lord, that you would equip us with your love, allowing it to flow in us and through us out to others, that they too would reveal, that they too would be able to experience the love that you have for us. Father, help us to be slow to speak, Father God, slow to wrath, but quick to listen so that we can be there for our fellow brothers and sisters. And even now, Father God, I pray that you would protect us from things seen and unseen, Father God, as we have read that the enemy is out there looking to use someone for his work. I pray that we would equip ourselves with the word, Lord God, that we would put on, Father God, the armor of God, as Ephesians 6 tells us to do, Lord God. 
<clears throat> guarding our mind, our heart, Lord God, guarding our body, Father God, having our feet shod with the gospel of peace, Father God, fully equipped with all that you have given us. Holy Spirit, have your divine way in us, and we thank you for meeting yet again another week, for keeping us in this season. We give you glory and we give you honor. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you guys for coming back into another single week. If you haven't liked the video already, hit the thumbs up. If you're new, subscribe, turn on your post notification. That way, anytime I upload, YouTube will send you the notification that I upload. This is the end of the video. This is motivation for young Christian. Me and Gio, we out. Peace.